In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use ThirdWeb's brand new Unity SDK as part of our gaming kit to create a simple Web3 game using Unity. I'll first show you the very basics of how to get Unity and install it on your computer, how to download and install the ThirdWeb Unity SDK into your Unity project, and then I'll show you some basic logic using the SDK, like connecting users' wallets, reading data, and writing data, to and from your smart contracts. Before we jump into the video, I wanna let you know that currently 70% of the amazing people like yourself that watch ThirdWeb's YouTube videos are still not subscribed to the channel. So before we begin, I'd love to ask you a favor. If you get any value out of these videos, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the ThirdWeb channel. And a little tip is we're going to be airdropping 10 users who have subscribed to the ThirdWeb channel, a very special NFT every week. So from the third web documentation, you can jump into the gaming kit section and get a kind of quick overview of how the Unity SDK, which is one of many of the gaming platforms we're planning on supporting, fits into the broader kind of gaming kit that third web provides. So I'll definitely recommend after this video, jump into the documentation to learn more. But what I'm going to show you is kind of this learning path that we have available where if you're very new to developing games at all, like I was a few weeks ago, jump into this learning path that I've kind of curated browsing through different Unity resources and place them into this kind of pathway where you can learn the basics of Unity, how to set yourself up for success with the Unity Hub and Unity Editor, all of the extensions that I found helpful setting myself up in this new environment, and then the courses that I recommended learning for just getting yourself familiar with things like the Unity Editor, how to navigate around, create basic objects, and just use the tools available as Unity is such a complex tool. So definitely recommend checking out the learning path. You'll learn things like how to install the Unity Hub and editor, which would be the first step in this video. So before we even begin, if you don't have Unity installed, jump into the learning path, install the Unity Hub and the editor, follow the resources that I recommend installing to get yourself set up, such as this using .NET in Visual Studio code guide, where you get the .NET coding pack, the extensions, and all of these things to kind of set yourself up for success. That will be linked in the description. Once you have everything installed and ready to go, you'll be able to launch the Unity Hub and see a screen that looks something like this. What we're looking at here is all of the projects that I've created. Yours is probably a bit more empty than this if this is your first time. What we're interested in though is in the top right, let's create a new project. And from the all template section, let's select 3D. In the project settings over here on the right hand side, let's give our project a name. So let's say my new project, for example, and then let's just click create project. Now this might take a couple of minutes. This is essentially just creating a new game with just a blank canvas or an empty scene in Unity for us to kind of get started with. And while that's happening in the background here, I'm gonna show you where we can download the Third Web Unity SDK. So if you go to the Third Web Dev um, organization on GitHub, or you can go directly from the docs. You can go to the gaming kit and go to the installation tab and click this download Unity package file here. Kind of the important part is it's just coming from our releases tab from our Unity SDK GitHub repository. So you can see here we have three releases so far. We have the initial v1.0.0 beta release, which under the assets section here, you can see we have the source code and we have most importantly, this Unity package file. So what you will wanna do is you'll probably want the latest version that has a Unity package file available. So for example, in v1.0.1, we added a couple of features to the initial release and you go to the assets section here and you click the Unity package file, sorry, to download that and we'll be able to import this as a package inside of the project that gets created for us inside of Unity. So it looks like my game is done loading in the background here. And now the first thing we wanna do is actually import the Unity SDK, which is essentially what we just downloaded from that GitHub release page. And the way we do that is from the assets menu item up the top left here, we can go to import package and select custom package. Now my Unity package folder 
file, sorry, that I just downloaded is in the downloads folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and open that up as the package. What this does first is it opens this import Unity package window that we have here. And you can see we're importing a variety of different things here, like a plugin, some scenes for some demo functionality. We're importing the text mesh pro for our UI. We're importing the actual source code in this third web scripts folder. So we have functionality to interact with things like the ERC721 NFTs, ERC20 tokens, the marketplace, the actual SDK code itself. And that's how we're going to instantiate and interact with the ThorWeb SDK, which is going to utilize the SDK under the hood to interact with our smart contracts, interact with our wallet and all of that good stuff that you know and love from the ThorWeb SDK. So within this window, all we need to do is just select all and click import. Now that's just going to import all of the available files from that Unity package. And then once that goes through, you'll be able to see all of the assets come into your project window here. So within this window, you can see we have now in the scenes folder, if we double click the third web demo scene, we open that up in our project. You might have to navigate around a little bit in your window. I've got it set up so it just shows the front of my canvas here. And you can see we have a bunch of buttons which have some kind of dummy uh, logic happening under the hood when you click them, like the connect wallet button, authenticate user, get the user's balance, deploy a contract, all of that awesome functionality from the ThorWeb SDK attached to these buttons. And what that's powered by is this file that we've just imported at the root assets folder here called ThorWeb SDK demos. And if you open this up in your text editor, you'll be able to see what's happening under the hood. I can kind of explore what's what's possible of the ThorWeb SDK in a Unity or C Sharp kind of environment. So the first thing that's most important is we're importing the ThorWeb namespace here. And that actually comes from the ThorWeb package that we've imported from that Unity package um, that we used to kind of import the Unity SDK overall. Now within that, there's a thirdweb slash scripts folder, which comes with the thirdweb SDK.cs file. And this is namespace thirdweb, which has all of these kind of scary looking functionality of instantiating the SDK. But for example, if you wanna know what's happening in the ERC721 folder, this is also in the namespace third web, and you can see all of the available functionality on, for example, if you were interacting with an NFT collection. So you can see you can get an NFT, you can get all NFTs, you can get owned, get the owner of an NFT, get the balance of a user, and all of the good stuff that's available in the ThirdWeb SDK. And now what's happening in our demo file is we're importing that namespace, and then we're instantiating the SDK in a private ThirdWeb SDK variable on line eight here. When the game starts in this kind of start function here, we're setting that SDK variable to a new third web SDK with a read only instance on the Goeli test network. So now we've instantiated the SDK, we can read any information from the blockchain, from any smart contract. And when we click the login or connect wallet button, that's when we'll be able to connect the user's wallet and start writing transactions to the blockchain. And we'll show you how that works in this file here. I'd encourage you to look around in this file and see how you can interact with the SDK to do all of the basic functions of reading and writing, such as getting NFTs, getting tokens, minting new NFTs. But the first one we're gonna take a look at is the actual connect button. So we're gonna say on login click, the button is going to set to connecting and we're going to call sdk.wallet.connect. And this is going to prompt the user with whatever wallet they have installed, such as a MetaMask wallet or a Coinbase wallet, whatever they have inside of their browser when we build the game is what's going to be prompted to connect to our game with their wallet. And you can see this on login click is setting the login button.txt. When the user clicks it, they connect their wallet, that's awaited, so while they're kind of typing their password in or accepting the prompt to connect to the website with their wallet, that's going to be awaited. Once that's done, we'll connect our wallet and change the text. And then we prompt them to change networks. So for example, if we want them on the Ethereum network in their wallet, we'll change them to that network as well. And now this button, if we click on the uh, connect button up here, you can see in the on-click handler, in the, um, kind of what we do when this button gets clicked section, we're saying use the Thoeb SDK demos file 
and whoops, I've lost it. Use the third web SDK demos file dot on login click and we're passing in this third web object here, which has the third web SDK demos uh, script associated with it. So we're saying, let's grab this third web object, grab the SDK demos script of that object. When this button gets clicked, let's call that object's script on login function. So essentially in simple terms, when this button gets clicked, we'll call the login function. And if you've used the JavaScript SDK, this pattern should be familiar to you when you get that function, attach it to a button, and then the user is prompted to connect their wallet. Then you can start using the SDK to write transactions on behalf of the connected wallet. So you can do things like mint NFTs from the connected wallet or claim tokens from a drop, deploy new smart contracts, authenticate them, get their balance. All of the capabilities of the ThorWeb SDK are now available to you inside of your game. To read data from our smart contract, all we need to do is pass the smart contract address to to the sdk.getContract function. And then we can use the ERC721, 1155, or 20, or marketplace, whatever your contract is, to perform the operations on that smart contract. So for example, if we have the contract, let's say this is an NFT collection contract, we can do contract dot, and you can see within the ERC721 object here, you can see we have get, get all, get owned, we have mint, mint2, all of the functionality of the SDK available to us in this C-sharp script as well. So you can see in this get ERC721, let's say we wanted to read an NFT's metadata from our smart contract. To do that, we can use the get function, and all we need to do is pass the token ID that we wanna get. So let's say token ID zero, and now within this NFT typed result variable, we have the NFT metadata for token ID zero from this NFT collection. The same goes for writing or creating data on the blockchain on your smart contracts. All you need to change is you need to have a wallet connected first. So once you have the connected wallet state, you can then call write transactions such as mint. For example, in this mint ERC20 function, we're calling get contract again. So that's the same pattern. We use the contract address to get to the smart contract. Then we can interact with it with functionality like ERC20.mint. And in this case, we're just minting 1.2 new tokens or ERC20 tokens into our contract. And we can await the result of that transaction and say, is that transaction successful? Perform some operation in that successful block. If it failed, we can use the error to say, here's what went wrong with your transaction. Since our SDK relies on you having that connected wallet, we need to build our game for a browser environment. To do that, we can go to the build settings from file build settings. What we need to do is just change the platform to this WebGL platform here. So let's go ahead and click switch platform onto WebGL. And you'll notice a few errors pop up before we're allowed to build and run the application. All we need to do is go to the player settings and this will bring up the project settings section here. Within the player, and then go to resolution and presentation, select the third web WebGL template instead of the default here. So swap over to third web. And then within other settings, we can disable this auto graphics API here. Sweet, we're ready to go. And what we can do to publish our game is under the publishing settings, we can also disable this compression format. So let's change that from gzip to disabled. Awesome, now let's close this project settings window and let's build and run our game on this WebGL environment. What you need to do on the first time you build and run the game is create a new build folder within your project. So I'll just call it build and select that folder. And it's just going to output the files of the build into that directory. Once your build is complete, it will open your game up in the browser like so. And now we can interact with any of the browser extension wallets such as MetaMask, such as Coinbase Wallet, as we would with any other website within our game deployed at this local host URL. So for example, if I click the connect button here, this is going to open up my Coinbase Wallet and ask me, do I wanna to connect to localhost, which is our game? And when I click connect, you can see that information is read and displayed on the UI. And you can play around as you choose to click any of these buttons to read and write data to and from the blockchain. But what I'm gonna show you next 
is how to upload and deploy your game to a production URL that you can share around with your friends. So I'll first just navigate to the directory where I built my game, which in my case was the my new project build folder here. And I'll copy this address and change into that directory inside of my terminal here. So I'll zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to change directory into that folder. And all we need to do is use the third web CLI to upload this to IPFS. And to do that, we can use NPX third web, we'll get the latest version of the third web CLI with the at latest tag here. And then we can just upload dot which is this directory. So we're going to upload all of the files that is required to run our game to IPFS. And since this has the index.html, we'll actually just be able to visit the IPFS hash and use a gateway that gets generated for us. We'll click that link and we'll be able to access our game in a public deployed URL hosted on IPFS. Once that's done, your game is fully uploaded to IPFS. We get this link that we can open up to access the IPFS storage through our gateway. So let's go ahead and open that up in our browser now. And all we'll see here is our game this time just hosted on a deployed URL rather than a localhost server, which is just our computer. So you can actually share this deployment URL to anybody and they'll be able to connect their wallet and interact with your game directly. So for example, from this deployed URL, I'll go ahead and connect to my wallet and then we can read and write transactions to the data as we were able to in our localhost. For example, if I click authenticate, I can assign messages from the SDK, so example.com, once you sign in with your account, the exact same thing happens and we can see the signature generated down here. If I do the exact same thing with my Coinbase wallet, all of this behavior is available in a typical browser environment with all of the support for the wallets that you would expect. If you have any questions about setting up the ThurWeb SDK in your Unity environment, feel free to jump into our Discord, speak with myself as well as all of the ThurWeb team directly and we'd love to hear from you on our new Unity SDK. We'd love to get your feedback on what you think is good, what you think is bad, and we'll be improving and iterating, releasing those improved versions for you to use and build your awesome Web3 games with. With that said, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more educational Web3 content like this in the very near future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.